right, so here we have the Aqua Balance. This is the 155 combi. It comes in three sizes, 80, 120, and 155. All units have a 10 to one turndown, uh, and that's natural gas or LP. It also comes in a heat only, same sizes, obviously just not combi. Uh, the combi boiler does have a pump built in. If this were a heat only boiler, we would not, would not have this pump. We would be mounting a pump external under the boiler. Plenty of room under the boiler. We do have a third party low loss header kit here, uh, but even with that, plenty of room for both our boiler supply and return, plenty of room for our domestic hot water in and out, along with tankless valves, uh, plenty of room to get there our gas, so really easy to hook up on the bottom. Some features of this boiler are it's venting. It can vent 100 feet. The larger size, the 155, will be three inch PVC, CPVC, or polypropylene. As you can see up top, it's stepped adapters. So those adapters will accept any of those materials just depending on insertion depth. And then our smaller sizes on the 80 and the 120, we can do two inch venting up to 100 feet. Um, inside all name brand components, Grunt Floss Pump, Honeywell Gas Valve, Kalefi Flow Switch Sensor, EBM PAPS Motor, Really robust setup in here. We do have our own transformer and relay for our thermostat circuit on the inside. So we can have um, 24 volts provided to an external thermostat. And we also have a relay and the transformer in there. So if something were to happen, it's not gonna blow the board. It's just going to damage the transformer on the inside. So it kind of protects the unit from any problems outside of the, uh, outside of the boiler. What we're going to do is just go through component overview on this. Normally there'd be two screws on the side and two screws on the bottom here. I only have one of them connected just so you're not watching me take apart screws for too long. But with just those four screws, you can remove each side of this boiler so you can get full access on all three sides. There's one screw holding the control in place. When the control screw is out, it's hinged on the left cover so you can swing it out of your way. Uh, but we're actually going to take this entire side off as well. So it would be another screw here and again two on the bottom on that side. Unhinge your control. It's safe to just let it hang right there. And now what we have is full access to the boiler. So looking at the boiler, we have our return from the system, uh, return going into the boiler. We have a Grunfoss pump. We have a small little air separator right here. We have our return sensor for the boiler. Right here we have a pressure switch. It's not a sensor, it's just an open close switch. If pressure drops too low, it will shut the boiler down on safety. Here we have our main heat exchanger. It's one pipe from back to front in a counter flow design. Out of the front of the heat exchanger, we have our supply sensor. That is a dual temperature sensor for safety. We have our supply bulb temperature. That's what would show your temperature on your gauge right here. Behind that, we have a three-way valve. It's a motorized valve here. It's got gasketed connections. It also has an override switch in the bottom where we can manually open it and we can manually lock it in the middle position for an emergency heating and hot water situation. Behind it, we have our flat plate with easy access to all the nuts on each side. On the right side of the control here, what we have is we have our flow switch for our uh, domestic flat plate. So that's actually a sensor that will read liters per minute going into the domestic so the boiler can modulate accordingly. We have our Honeywell gas valve line going into our Venturi right here, which is then mounted to our fan and mounted to our heat exchanger. So that's your combustion system right there going into the heat exchanger and burner. Right here on the bottom left would be your igniter and ground cable. On the bottom right of the heat exchanger here would be your view glass so you can see the flame and the burner as the unit's running. So on this heat exchanger design, we have a stainless steel and titanium hybrid heat exchanger. What we do is it's a one pass heat exchanger. So we have a full one inch size tube in the back. That tube is ovaled on the inside to give us this pattern, but it's one tube from the back return, counter flow to the flame up to the front and out our supply right here. Very quick reacting and a very safe heat exchanger. Unlike some other designs that are water tube in parallel, if there's ever an obstruction or any scale buildup in this heat exchanger, we're gonna go off on very high limit very quickly and protect the heat exchanger. On a lot of systems like this, they don't have just one tube that enters, but they have a manifold. And if one tube inside that manifold were to clog, the boiler's not gonna know because flow is gonna be distributed through the other tubes. And you may end up steaming inside that one tube and damaging your entire heat exchanger from one small tube buildup or scale buildup. This heat exchanger will react to a blockage in it and shut the entire system down. So very safe, very efficient heat exchanger design.
All right, so here we got the Aqua Balance. When we turn it on, it's going to go into a purge mode. So first thing that's gonna happen is it's gonna come up with the software of the control, and then it's gonna set FH, which is a five minute purge to help purge the heat exchanger of any air uh, on the water side, and then purge any gas if there's anything inside the heat exchanger on the air side. To get out of this, you can hold the power button for five seconds or five of these kind of flip flops back and forth. And what's gonna happen, so now the control is, is skipped that, but it's in the off, so we're gonna turn the control on by holding that power button for five seconds again. And now our control's on, that's our home screen showing that we're capable of doing heat or domestic in our current set point. And if we want, we can get into this control to change some settings. Um, they're called our B parameters. What we would do is hold the top two buttons for 10 seconds. So every time I say seconds, it's going to be 10 of those little character changes. When we get into this parameter, this is where we would change it from natural gas to LP and change a few other settings. So in the manual, there's a whole list of our B parameters. And what we're gonna do is be able to change our parameters from two to three to four by hitting the bottom plus or minus button. So we're B06, if I hit it once down, we're B05. To get into that parameter, we would hit the top buttons. So currently B05 is set to 200. If I wanted to change it, I could just continue hitting the plus or minus button. Uh, there is no save. When I change it, it will automatically save. So I just need to remember, I didn't want to change this. So I have to bring it back down to 200 where it was. Go to the next parameter with the plus button down below. Top plus button would view it. So that's how you get through your B parameters. Um, to get out of this menu, it's the same way as you got in. You would hold the top plus and minus for 10 seconds. And that will get you out of the B parameters and back to the home screen. So another uh, useful menu is you need to hold the reset button, and this is a long one. You're gonna end up having to hold this for 20 seconds, and this will get into where you can read your information on your control, your history, and also change a lot of your hard parameters. I don't really recommend that. There's not many hard parameters you ever have to change, but if you are working with tech support or someone, this is where they may have you get in to do that. So similar to our B menu, as we're in this menu, we can change through the different menus with the bottom button. So transparent parameters was TS, IN is info or inquiry mode, HI would be our error history, and RE would be a reset of the whole control to take it back to factory standards. So a little bit different. So if we wanted to go into our info mode, once you're on that, press the reset button for one second, and that's gonna get you into the menu. So when you're in that menu, uh, that's showing T01, and in the manual, T01 is your supply sensor temperature. So to view that, I hit the top plus, and currently we're 112 degrees at this sensor right up here on the supply. If I hit it to T03, that would be our return sensor. Again, we're at 113 because our boiler's not running. If I were to go to T04, it'd be my domestic. So bottom plus button, top to view it. My domestic's 95 degrees because nobody's running anything. Uh, L08. So that would be my burner load. So if I scroll down to eight, hit plus, my burner load is zero because I'm not running right now. If I were to crack a faucet and get the burner running, you'd see that once this unit fires up, we're staging up to 100%. And then as it modulates, it'll give you a live feedback of what that burner is currently doing. We know that our unit's on for domestic because if I go back up to T04 and view it, we're gonna see that we're putting out 131, 132 with our domestic. So very, very handy uh, menu. We can also read water flow rate at number nine. So currently we're moving 31 liters per minute, um, or th sorry, 3.1 liters per minute. There's a decimal in that. So that's how you step through that menu. To get out of this menu, it would be hold that reset button again for 20 seconds, and that will bring us to the home menu. So once we're at our home menu, you can see that we are using domestic. You have an active call with that faucet tripping. If I were to shut it off, our domestic would end up calling. We go into D1, which means we're going to wait two minutes before we either go into standby or swap to a heating call. Currently, we're just waiting to see if there's another domestic call that's gonna happen. 